Mary Glassman is now in her sixth term as first selectman of Simsbury, and now she's thinking about running for governor. Something about Mary. Good morning. Good morning. It's been a long time, right? 1991, I covered Simsbury for the Harper Current, and they had a, a race going on in town. They threw in this sacrificial lamb, a Democrat named Mary Glassman against an entrenched incumbent, Ted Tansy, and he pulled off his major upset, and it shook up the town, and now six terms later, you're running for governor. I have a habit of getting in races late and winning, so yeah, watch well, out. Tell me why. I mean, this state's in a lot of trouble. You've got billions of dollars in deficits. You've got job issues. You've got young people who aren't coming to the state. What, would, uh, what is compelling about Connecticut and trying to be governor at this time? Well, I think there's uh, obviously tremendous stress in our system in the state, but the issues that I've been talking about for 20 years are still the issues that need to move our state forward. Um, when I first ran for uh, public office in 1991, I never expected to win in a Republican no town. Um, but I ran on education and open government. I've been a newspaper reporter, a lawyer, and um, really the issues that are important to me I didn't think were being talked about in this race. So here I am with uh, just two months uh, into the race, and it's a very exciting time. Well, Connecticut right now is in a crisis, right? Let's look at some of the issues. Let's talk about the top issues, debt. you got a major debt issue going on. As governor, you got to cut. you got to cut something somewhere. What would you cut as governor when you get in there? Well, I think, Stan, you're right. It's a, a tremendous uh, deficit facing the state of Connecticut, but it's really what got us here was uh, random cuts and panic reactions. We haven't had a really long-term approach to the state of Connecticut. Um, in our community and in uh, most small towns and, and good towns across the state, we actually keep our debt under control. We've met our pension obligations. We've bonded what we needed to bond. We didn't overbond. And if you look at the state of Connecticut, our debt is one of the highest in the state of Connecticut. And if you look at how much Connecticut pays in past obligations, there's really no money left to invest in the future of Connecticut. But then the question was, where would you cut? A lot of places. First, I think I was listening to you earlier, interview uh, folks about education money and money that were, is being left on the table. Federal dollars in education, federal dollars in transportation, millions of dollars that we are not getting our fair share because of state policies that the governor's not implemented. Give you another example. On the revenue side, uh, most states have federal economic development regions. Some of the things I've talked about, regional approaches to government for 20 years. Um, because we don't have regional approach to federal economic development, we don't get millions of dollars into the state. So you have to look at the money that we're leaving on the table first. On the expenditure side, you know, the fact that it takes um, 15 agencies to administer Medicaid money. That's an area we so should look duplication at. Out there. Duplication. How about those 50,000 state jobs? Do you see yourself having to, I mean, part of that means cutting some jobs and having to tell folks on the, on the stump, I've got to cut some jobs, folks. How do you I, do I that? I think it's, it's more about how we implement services. We spend $18 billion in the state of Connecticut. It's not that we need to spend more, it's what we're spending. My approach, regional approaches to government consolidation, we started making, a, I thought, an exciting uh, approach to looking at services when we brought in David Osborne, reinventing mm -hmm. government, started saying, you know, how can we approach government differently? Uh, we need more than just cuts or increases. We need a whole bold new approach to how we deliver services. But historically, they bring these gurus in, right, new government, they bring in the reports, and they end up being good paperweights. They don't do a whole lot with them, right, well, we historically said here in Connecticut. Because we don't follow a sustained plan in the state of Connecticut. We did that in transportation. In uh, 2001, I was counsel to the Speaker of the House Moore Alliance. Uh, we actually put a state plan together for transportation. Very simply, we take the gas tax money, we invest in repairing our roads, and invest in rails and buses. And what have we done over the last 10 years? We've swept those gas tax dollars and put them into a uh, general fund budget. So we've not been a good partner in the state of Connecticut. Keeping young people. This is an aging state. Young people leaving in masses. No jobs here. How do you bring young people back to the fold? Well, it's actually interesting, Stan. It's keeping young people here. Uh, UConn, I, I hope to be the first uh, UConn grad to uh, be the governor. Connecticut's <laughs> never, really Connecticut's okay. never wow. had a UConn grad as governor. Um, and uh, we have invested uh, millions of dollars into our education systems from our community colleges, our technical colleges, our universities. And then we export our best product, our young people. So what do you do? First thing you do is you create housing so young people can stay in Connecticut. And you link but, them up. But if there are no jobs. Yeah. Well, Why live here? The, uh, well, first of all, the Hartford Insurance, which is our biggest uh, taxpayer in the Simsbury, and it's the state's third largest taxpayers, has said that they have trouble recruiting young professionals because the housing market is not available. So first, if you're going to re uh, retain and attract young professionals, they have to have a place to live that's affordable. Uh, second, we, we don't link um, our university systems with our jobs. We don't actually train or... Uh, provide incentives for businesses to keep young professionals. 
For example, nursing. We know there's a shortage, mm -hmm. but yet we're not linking the nursing programs. We're cutting nursing programs. We know there's a shortage of engineers, but we're not in, in, um, having state policies that uh, invest in, in bringing more engineers. So we're not meeting uh, the needs of our state because we're not talking to the people of our state. We don't have a governor who's engaged with the business community to hear why UTC says they'll go anywhere but Connecticut. Achieve, achieving gap. Sorry to cut you off. Achieving gap. We talked about that last. Yeah. What would you do? The Connecticut distinction of the, the widest achievement gap in America. How do yeah. you eliminate that? Actually, education is, is my top priority for the state of Connecticut. Um, I think that it, it links to jobs. It le leads to growth. Um, I grew up in New Britain, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, my hard mom, hit in New Britain. Hard hit in New Britain. A kid, I know what it's like to grow up in New Britain. My mom grew up in foster care. Uh, my dad was uh, dead died by the time he, I was four. Uh, no one in our family had ever gone to college. I was the first uh, woman in my family to go to college. And because I was able to afford going to the University of Connecticut, I worked over the summer, worked a number of jobs, went to UConn. Uh, now I have three children, two in college, uh, one who will be going in the fall. And, uh, you know, in just two generations, I went from having a mother growing up in foster care to a granddaughter who will graduate from Yale University this spring. So I have personally seen the power of education and how tough it is to, uh, you know, make a change in your life unless you have that education. Your biggest knock, go ahead. In Connecticut. Uh, ten we, seconds we have Okay, here. ten seconds or less. Uh, I think that as governor, I would make sure that every kid in Connecticut can read by the time they're in third grade. That's exactly what your earlier uh, listeners or your earlier guests were talking about. We have the biggest achievement gap in the country, and yet we are the wealthiest state in Connecticut. And as governor, I would make sure that we meet the obligations of every kid because we need every child in our state to succeed in order to prepare our children for the jobs that we're trying to create. All right. Here we have five seconds. Jody Rowe, I can't leave you. Real quick, your comments on Jody Rowe. Why are you different than Jody Rowe, the governor? Um, I'll be a governor who shows up. Uh, the governor's put the state on autopilot. The things that you're hearing about, the deficits, uh, we should have already started uh, making a change in. And uh, we shouldn't be waiting for the next governor to take the oath of office. All right, she's Mary Glass. And folks, when we come back, we'll talk about a novel performance program that gives voice to the voiceless. Don't go away. You are locked in to the Stan Simpson Show.